What's going on YouTube? Chris here. I want to bring you all an update today. A Litecoin right now we're sitting $168. We're up about 6%. We're hitting our second target here and that was at $168 and about 40 cents right in this range. The next overhead resistance we're going to be looking up to is going to be about $182. So we're going to start breaking all this stuff down. We're actually going to work through the time frames as well for Litecoin. So if you get some from these videos, guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that notification bell. That's going to help you the most. I try to do almost daily videos, keep people updated on the market. So if you get some from that, don't forget to you know let me know down low. I appreciate all your guys' opinions. So if we can have a daily candle close up above 168 today, we look up to around that 182. If we're able to get over top of 182 and start having candle closes above it, we're going to look at $200, that big round number psychologically. That would be the next overhead resistance we'd be looking for. But the most important thing would be to get a candle close up above that 168 today, then that 182 probably in the next day or two to come if we continue this nice uptrend that we've been in. So right now we always, I like to put this out there for people. So on the one day time frame, trading views calculating the volatility stop right now at about $140. So what that's saying is if you're using some type of a trailing stop loss on the one day time frame, that's where they suggest that you'd put it calculating the volatility that's been in the market. So I just like to put that out there for people. People ask about it all the time. So I want to let you know there, we're still up above our 20 EMA, our 50 moving average our 100 and our 200 so looking good there our macd we are still in the positive moving up right there the rsi is at 75 right now and the tough thing about you know litecoin when it does get these massive pumps sometimes it can only cool down to about 70 and then it'll pump again and you'll get up to you know 80 85 and then it'll cool down again and you may only get to 70 and when you read the traditional book 70 you're already in overbought territory for the rsi but like i said in crypto i like to move that up to about 80 or 85 right in that range we can really get overextended sometimes even into the 90s so i like to always go off price action before i go off any type of relative strength index or macd or any type of oscillator it's all about that price action so pay attention to that now if we do start going to the downside here because we did have a lot of selling pressure if you guys take a look at this here we were talking about a high wave candle a couple videos ago and that did come in so we had a lot of selling pressure now what we're seeing is if we can have enough volume to get up through these higher levels or if this is one more little push before we start to correct a little bit now support we look at about 142 dollars and then it'd be down to around 136 and then i'd look to 123 and i also have an alert here at about 119. So that's going to be a potential buying area I'm looking at. And then even if it dropped lower, just some hot spots, 100 we'd want to continue to defend to support that round psychological number if we ever were to get back into that area. Because remember, guys, when we do get these corrections, you know, we can pump, we can really have these deep 20% corrections. So realize that this last time we just consolidated sideways, then we got that next pump to the upside. So typically in uptrends, what you're going to get is that consolidation or you're going to get that nice quick retracement that lasts anywhere from four to 10 days right in that range. And then you start pumping again once you set that higher low. And you can see as we work up here, higher low, higher low, higher low, we just keep working up higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. And we're pushing up there and then we'd see where we come down to see if we can continue to set that higher low. It's all about how the market moves watching these corrections you can even see after we pumped up here you can see our one two three four five and then we started back up in this direction as well so just watching the markets and also watching when you get those bounces like this one here was on low volume indicating that you may get another push to the downside if it was on heavier volume that could have been the bottom there and you could have continued to move to the upside so a lot of these things are little secrets that you know you want to study and read about because once you understand how markets trend that's what's going to help you out in this space so you won't panic or freak out. And also, guys, I wanted to let you know if you're ever interested, it's $25. I have a little trend trading course down there. It's about a 30, I think a 30 minute video or so. And if you're interested in that, hit me up at that email. A lot of people have liked this, that it really helps with their trend trading. And I just wanted to make it affordable for people who really want to take their trading to the next level. So if you're interested in that, check that out down low. Next, we're going to get into the 12 hour time frame. We're just going to work our way down here. So on the 12 hour time frame, you can see where we're pushing up right here. We are a little bit below average volume right now. So we want to pay attention to that because if we don't get those big swells of volume, we're going to have to come back down and correct a little bit. So on the 12 hour, we still are bullish on the MACD. The RSI is at 75 right now. If we get into the four hour time frame, take a look at this. 
And we're paying attention to that volume as well as we're approaching overhead resistance areas. So this would be our area going up. We have about average volume right now. We don't have that massive swell like when we broke out of this little triangle. That's what I like to play as well, guys, is trend line breaks and chart patterns. You can see here when we broke to the downside, that stuff can really help you out. On the four-hour time frame, we're still up above our 20, 50, 100, and 200. And what I would suggest, you know, this isn't financial advice, but <clears throat> if you're a longer-term investor, I wouldn't try to mess with, you know, swing trading the market or anything like that. I would just let it ride at this point, deal with the fluctuations, the drawdowns when they come, when it's correcting, and then just ride that next leg up until we can see clearly that we're going to be going into a bear market. And I don't believe we're near that yet. Okay, we still got, I, I believe, a nice little alt season that will come. It could be quick, maybe only four months, six months, but I think we're going to see something special here down the road. So if anything, when you see these massive dips, yet again, not financial advice, that's when you want to be stepping in and accumulating positions and then riding it up the next time, if that makes sense. So MACD here, you see we're pretty tight. We're trying to get a little cross to the upside there. RSI, we're at 71 on the four-hour time frame. The volatility stop, if you were playing it on the four-hour time frame, they got you at 152. So if we drop below that, that would stop you out of your position. Then you look for another spot that's a little bit lower to try to get into a position. Then we'll go down to the one-hour time frame. On the one-hour time frame, still up above the 20, 50, 100, and 200. RSI is at 64, so we just still have more room if volume wants to come in here to push up higher, maybe hit that 182 on the one-hour time frame. Volatility stops at 159 right there on the one-hour time frame. Still bullish on the MACD. We have not had any downside cross right there, so I would say just having more volume as we're coming up approaching some of these higher levels right now. And, you know, even on the one-hour time frame, that's nice to see that you're still up above all your moving averages, guys. You know, and as I can talk to you here for a second, when we're looking at Litecoin and we're looking at Ethereum, we're looking at Bitcoin, guys, I want to talk to you. You're blessed to be in this space and to know about this right now. I mean, think of how many countries don't even have internet or anything, and let alone the fact that you know about cryptocurrency and you're in a space that on some days, you know, the prices can go up. What Looper and go up the other day at 90%? Something along those lines. I mean, Ethereum, when it can rip those 20% days, Bitcoin, look what it's done. I mean, guys, you are truly blessed to be in right now in this space. Like I told you, I got in, it was around, I believe it was like April or May 2017. So I've been a part of that big uh, bubble pop, essentially, where we're all the way up and then the entire bear market making videos every day for people, guys, when everyone basically gave up on the crypto market. It was a lonely, lonely spot for a while. And, you know, I'm grateful that we're here now and more people are coming back in. But, you know, it's been a long road, three, three and a half years or whatnot to be able to see some of this stuff. So the people who are coming in now, you know, it's really a blessing that you're coming into this space and the people who have been here for a long time as well and have been able to accumulate in some of those low areas. I mean, you think about it, guys, we were talking about Litecoin. I mean, it was only two months ago, three months ago. You can go back to the videos. We were talking about Litecoin at $45. I was trying to warn people, you know, when Bitcoin gets going, it typically carries Litecoin with it. And I just want to see people be successful in this space. Not so you can buy Lamborghinis, so that you can buy your freedom, so that you can be free, so you can do what you want when you want to do it. That's why I'm in this space. I'm not in it for mansions. I'm not in it for Lamborghinis. <laughs> I'm not in it for any of that type of stuff. I want to buy my freedom, get completely out of debt, have a trading account, and be able to trade from basically anywhere in the world and work when I want to work. Because right now, I own another business, and I'm on other people's time frames. I work when they're available to get their session in. I'm a personal trainer and a specialist in fitness nutrition, so I'm helping people one-on-one -on -one individually. And at some point, I'd like to be free of that to where I can spend more time with my family. I'm not having to do both businesses and everything else that I have to deal with. You know, I want to buy my freedom. That's what I'm looking for. So let me know down low. Are you trying to buy freedom? Are you trying to buy a Lamborghini? I mean, everybody teach their own, but I want that freedom aspect. So I hope you get some from this, guys. God bless each and every one of you. Take care, my friends.